morning. Nice to see everyone is here bright and early. Uh, why don't we start? I mean, you guys all have uh, experienced quite a lot of growth in the companies you invest in. Uh, what role do investors play in helping these companies at the, the growth stage? Um, anyone can take that. Uh, stay out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, uh, the, the role of the investor is to, in essence, be a support, a support mechanism for the founder. I mean, founders are the ones, you guys are, how many entrepreneurs are there in the crowd? Yeah, you guys are the ones that are actually doing all the work, right? You're the ones with the sleepless nights, spending time recruiting, working on the business model. And your investors should be an advisor. They should not be overbearing. They should not be directing you. Um, but they should be a resource for you to go to to help you grow your business. So I think the role of investor, especially in a hyper-growth company, is um, be a sounding board, help devise strategy, but really try and stay out of the way because um, you guys are the ones that are executing on the model. So be very careful about who you bring into your investor base, who you bring onto your board of directors, uh, because they are going to be a key resource for you. Mm -hmm. uh, Hannah. Um, that's interesting because uh, we, we just discussed before the panel whether we had we would have an argument on one of that topic. Mm -hmm. And I guess we could have an argument about that because Rocket, um, of course, we try to be super active investments and we try uh, investor and we try to, um, you know, do a lot of stuff also with and for our ventures. So we, we when we set up a company, we supply a lot of um, central services from our team in Berlin. We try to uh, share experiences from ex yeah, from ventures around the world. Um, and that's why we, of course, we are much more on their neck all the time to, to, to grow faster, to not only um, deliver funds and, and investments, but, but be, be active in the recruiting, also um, you know, act as an interim operations manager from time to time. Um, but you know, it's, it's just a bit of a different model because, of course, Rocket is not only an investor, but also a builder. And you know, we try to roll up our sleeves all the time just to, to, to get things started at the very beginning even ourselves, and then get, get founders on board, perhaps even at the second step sometimes. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Harry, do you think is it better for companies to grow very fast in the beginning and then maybe uh, you know, slow a little bit more later or start slow and, and, and then you know, have some experience and go for the growth afterwards? Yeah, so, uh, so Clearview Partners, we're, we're a growth and early stage growth uh, investing company. And um, what we really look for are opportunities and situations where there are certain deficits, whether it's technology management or market def deficiencies that we could deploy more capital against. And I think uh, because we're going to China Focus, uh, it's such a dynamic and exciting market right now that uh, if you're not really growing, you're probably losing, right? And so in a, such an ex exciting environment, there are bound to be winners and losers. And so when we speak to entrepreneurs, the thing that we look for very often is they may have a really big vision and they may have the most amazing business plan. But even if they can execute against it, but the ecosystem does not support it, whether they have an inadequate supply chain or the wrong go-to-market um, uh, uh, um, uh, system, they're really not gonna realize their size of price. And so uh, growing too fast is really a great grand idea, but you really have to have all the pieces in place so that when you do deliver and execute against it, you can win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, Hanu, you're talking about uh, backstage about some of the challenges you guys face, face in uh, emerging economies, right? Because it doesn't matter if the company is growing too fast, but there's no local infrastructure, you know, th then you can't realize the, the expansion, just like uh, he was saying. Can, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I think for us, uh, growth is kind of the essential thing. And I think we, I, I would always believe and I always argue you cannot really grow too fast. But of course, you need to fix operations while you're growing. You need to be ready and, and make yourself ready to be growing as fast as we would like uh, you to grow fast all the time. So, you know, it's, it's, it's like uh, fixing a plane that's not already, you know, not, not parked at the landing dock, but it's already uh, taking off and you just need to fix it while, while it's flying. So that's very much of our approach. But of course, you're right. I, you know, we, we discussed about my just recent visit to some of our ventures in Bangladesh, where you don't have any, or not any proper infrastructure, but you, you don't have traffic lights in, in, in a city like Dakar with 10 million or 20 million people now. So, um, of course, to the e-commerce e in such an environment is super challenging. So you need to be even more creative, even more, you know, you cannot rely on anything. So you really need to invent everything yourself when it comes to basic infrastructure and, and distribution. And I think 
um, I believe, especially in some of the pioneer markets, we are also looking at and in investing and being active in our, with our companies, let it be Bangladesh, let it be Pakistan, let it be Myanmar. Of course, when we have this infrastructure eventually in place, which is distribution, internet access, broadband internet access, things like that, of course, we will see much, much um, faster growth even than we see today, which will be very exciting, I think, also from an investor, but also from an entrepreneur point of, point of view. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, have any of you guys faced problems in terms of, uh, I mean, obviously, we are, we, uh, the, the internet companies, the technology companies now are growing very fast, but uh, have you had any recent issues of, you know, where you need to help the companies grow? What, what sort of things are you telling them to, to speed up their expansion and their growth? So um, from, the, from the Silicon Valley perspective, one of the things that we constantly think about is um, when do you turn on monetization? Right, so if, if you're if, if early on in the life of the company, you might decide that growth is way more important than monetization in, in your business model. So you might, might just spend a lot of money and a lot of time acquiring users. At some point, you're going to have to have a sustainable business model. Because what is a company around for? Well, a company's around for, for making money, right? I mean, that's why we're all here. Um, so at some point in time, you have to develop a sustainable business model, but you don't want to turn on monetization too soon. So that's a constant debate that we have at the board, uh, at the board level, is when do we actually go for, for that step? Um, another thing that we, we talk about is how much do we want to invest in growth? And kind of a, 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 dirty, a dirty secret um, is that paid acquisition, right? You have paid acquisition of users and you have organic growth. And right before a company does a financing round, you'll see their user, user base goes like this. And why does that happen? Well, because they've spent a lot of money investing in paid growth. Is that sustainable? That's something that, as an investor, you're going to have to determine. Uh, but that's kind of a, a, a false trick because if you don't have a great product, which is, at the end of the day, what's most important, having a great product. Right? If you have a great product, users are organically going to come to you, and that starts the flywheel, and then paid acquisition results in that flywheel going faster. Um, so that discussion at the investor level, at the entrepreneur level, is, is something you guys really have to spend time thinking about, is how much do I invest in paid growth? How much do I invest in developing the product? And at what point do I start that flywheel, investing in that flywheel to to have uh, organic growth ramp up. I would, uh, I would agree with Jim uh, largely. And I think one of the things that we look for really is, uh, um, does the company have the right focus in place to win? And uh, growth for the sake of growth really is not sustainable. And, and, uh, and so what we look for are really capabilities. Uh, in, in the case of consumer markets uh, that we focus on, we look really for three things that we would consider to be the triangle advantages. We look for, does it have a unique brand? Does it have a supply chain that's sustainable? And does it have a unique go-to-market strategy that they can deliver against? And very often in dynamic and exciting markets, which many of the entrepreneurs in this room I'm sure are experiencing, there is a lack of focus because to chase growth, they want to do everything. And mm -hmm. in doing everything, they get very, very little right. And so to chase growth for the sake of growth is not really sustainable. And uh, so a lot of it is really about building capabilities that at the end of the day, at the back end of our investment, we look for multiple exit options. So we think about if it cannot go IPO and if then it does not have that opportunity, does it have capabilities that it would be valuable from an M&A perspective? Because multinationals and other companies think about it differently. To buy sales for the sake of sales is not really that interesting, but to buy unique capabilities that they can then bolt on to a bigger system, that's valuable and you've created a lot of value for yourselves and your enterprise. Mm. I, I completely agree with, with both of you. And I think um, just to, to add on to that, I think what's very important, especially at the early stages and when you want to grow fast, is again that you have the right team on board that of course can do this prioritization that you mentioned and that also can make the right calls in terms of monetizing what's the right time, what are the, the, kind of the key capabilities we need to meet. Um, so um, I sometimes feel that you know, because everybody is so much busy and just kind of fixing things in the early startup environment, sometimes people are not spending enough um, time and uh, you know, thinking of getting the right people on board and also having like, you know, a, a capable set of people and a broad set of people that can, uh, uh, yeah, that can sustain that and that can uh, help them uh, doing that. So we are very much actively 
trying to push our ventures and work with our ventures to recruit good people, to have more good people on board, even though perhaps they don't think they need them now, but we know with the kind of growth plans we have, they will need them tomorrow for sure, and you don't get them tomorrow so quickly. So that's a, a very big focus, uh, also personally for me at the moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, can you guys discuss a little bit one thing that uh, Jim mentioned, that this whole uh, uh, issue over growth versus monetization? Obviously, everyone wants to grow, but at one point you need to make money. So is there a key, is there, is there uh, where do you go for the monetization and you say, wait, we, 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 we need to make some money here? That, that's a tough one. It, it will, <laughs> I wish there were you don't wanna, uh, As they say, you don't want to take the, the punch bowl yeah. too early, you know, before the party gets going, right? Yeah, so you know, I think at some point you have to, uh, to prove to investors and, and um, uh, largely to investors and shareholders that you have a sustainable business model. Um, when, and in the early phases, you're burning cash, right? And, and you're, you're spending more than you, you're making. And so cash is always king because if you don't have enough cash, you end up going under. So to the point where you can actually prove that you're making money, I mean, we have a lot of companies in Silicon Valley that are still not cash flow positive. Uh, but investors have said, the mar and the market believes, and they've told the story that it's okay to grow because at some point you are going to turn on monetization and you're going to make money. Uh. We, we think about it in two ways. The first way we think about it is uh, the marginal contribution of these either users or products or services. Uh, and, and the second way we think about it is how long and how steep is this J-curve going to last? So for example, one of the examples of a company that we've invested in is a very, very large online, offline fruit retailer in China. In the last 24 months alone, the revenue has gone from 15 million to about 120 million. That's pretty fast growth mm -hmm. in US dollars. And uh, now, to deploy capital against that kind of growth is really a very tricky situation. Are you going for the sake of growing or are you really doing so profitably? So we think about it from a perspective of saying, on a marginal contribution basis on your existing customers, are you going to see a flattening of that J-curve? And do you have a line of sight towards profitability? Will each order at the end of the day, sometime in the near future, be profitable for you? Or is it going to be a forever subsidized model? If that is the case, and it's only an equity back financing uh, or growth story, it's not going to last. Mm. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I completely agree, but, but uh, I think it's definitely a tough one because I think as we are active in a lot of the consumer markets and an and e-commerce model, marketplace, et cetera, especially when it comes to, to, to markets that are also not yet really used to the internet as a, as a whole and not to e-commerce as a whole, I'm again talking a bit of these pioneer markets, then to, to, to already switch on monetization um, it can, be very, can be very difficult, but you know, I, I have an interesting uh, story, perhaps we, we have a, like, um, started a hotel a booking engine company um, that's also active in, in, in Pakistan. Yeah? Uh, so the, the, uh, you would, the, first call, the first orders we got, we would call back most of the consumers to basically confirm the booking, confirm that this is kind of you know, a real <coughs> booking and then take on uh, details of the, uh, of the, of the um, uh, consumer. And um, a lot of the guys actually answered, oh, you're a real company. I didn't really know that this is true and that you really exist and uh, it actually works to book a hotel via your site, etc." So, of course, if we would uh, like kind of have a big payment barrier already now, um, you know, we wouldn't succeed at all. So we are spending also a lot of time with our investors to talk to them all the time to tell them, no, we should not yet be profitable. We should <coughs> invest more. We should kind of build our brands first. And then, you know, let's, let's focus on uh, cash flow um, a bit later. But I'm completely with you. Uh, you at least need to have the proof at some point in some market, at some of your KPIs, let it be contribution margin one, two, three, wherever, that you see you're moving it into the right direction so that you get confidence that it's not something that's completely unsustainable, but it is something that you can turn on. And of course, everybody invest, every investor and everybody will always ask you whether you can actually turn that monetization on. We all know that's not as easy, so you need to at least <coughs> show gradual improvements, and I think then you know, you'll succeed in the end. Let me dovetail <laughs> on that a little bit. Um, it, gets, it goes back to product, right? And ideally, before you turn on monetization, 
you have worked enough on your product and run enough experiments to prove that uh, if I turn on monetization, I'm turning it on in the right way. I'm not turning it on in a way that is gonna result in my user base being really pissed off and then my usage absolutely dropping. So uh, what, what you should do as entrepreneurs is in this day and age and this, these types of companies, constant, constantly be testing different models. Do a lot of A-B testing to determine that, hey, when I turn on monetization, it's not going to be a, have a massive detrimental impact on my long-term business prospects and my growth. And if you're able to find that model that ultimately is able to do that without major disruption, you could turn it on at any time at that point. Mm -hmm. one, one thing I wanted to add to that is, um, uh, obviously as investors on this uh, panel, we think about source of use of capital and we think about where that money is gonna get spent. And, um, and so very often value drivers is really a top of mind consideration for us. And uh, the one thing that I get excited about uh, in China particularly, and I've seen a lot of the companies outside, in fact, in the exhibition hall, is the idea of, I guess Carl Bass really said it best, right? He, he said, it's the concept of infinite computing. I think in the past, we used to think about computing power as a limited, scarce, expensive undertaking. But in fact, it's becoming cheaper, easier, and it's got infinite capabilities. And so when I think about growth drivers, in China particularly, with rising cost of labor, raw material costs going up, putting money to computing power to drive growth is actually a very, very good use of uh, asset deployment to drive growth. So um, that's what I get excited about walking around this conference room, and I guess that's why most of the entrepreneurs here are thinking about and doing, because to be able to leverage a technology driver on top of a traditional business and fuel growth is very, very efficient deployment of capital. Mm. Uh, what, uh, we're almost running out of time. Uh, what advice do you guys have for companies that are growing very quickly to get to the next level and stay there? Um, for me, it would be focus on product. Um, you know, our, our best focus on product, and as, as you talked about earlier, focus on team, uh, because team is ultimately execution. And if you have a great team, you're able to pivot your company, uh, run a lot of different experiments when you can, because uh, that enables you to quickly hone in on product market fit and enables you to hone in on what is the pain point I'm solving. That, that, that is the thing you should wake up every day and think about, what is the pain point that I'm solving? Um, Hanno, uh, do you need advice? Uh, I think uh, don't be afraid of growth because it's a great thing. So, um, you know, sometimes, you know, it can be a bit scary sometimes when, you know, you, you get a lot of orders coming in, you don't really know how to figure it out, but, you know, just, just do it, um, go for it, and I think uh, then you'll succeed and make it happen. Huh? Mm. Be focused, differentiate, and execute against that, and don't drift. Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, don't want to get the other uh, events delayed. So uh, Jim, Harry, Hanno, thanks for your time. Thanks everyone for uh, coming here so early on a Saturday.